Okay, so today we're going to talk about how you can execute your tasks faster. My name's Chris, I'm from tipsforlawyers.com, and this is the Tips for Lawyers podcast. If you want to leave a review or a ranking, I'd really appreciate it. Listen to the podcast first so you can realize how awesome it is, and then head over to tipsforlawyers.com slash iTunes, leave a ranking, leave a review. I always appreciate that sort of feedback. It helps me stay visible, it gives me a little bit of encouragement, and it helps me know that you're actually out there listening and uh, getting something out of it. So it can sometimes seem uh, to people that some lawyers manage to execute things very quickly and just get amazingly large amounts of work done, but others manage to spend the whole day on a task that they thought was only going to take an hour or so. Today I'm not going to talk about productivity tips or hacks really. Uh, Today I wanted to talk about how it is that I personally ensure as much as possible that I can actually execute a task fairly quickly, because it is a little bit of misdirection, uh, to be perfectly honest. It's sort of like the overnight success. You know, the old overnight success story, they were an overnight success after they worked for 30 years to get there. It's much the same as that, because the process I use to ensure that I'm going to execute quickly is that I actually spend quite a lot of time in the planning phase. Now, that doesn't solve all problems necessarily, but it does give you a pretty good head start. So, what are we going to do? You've just been given a task for today's purpose. It doesn't really matter what that task is. Perhaps it's drawing a research memo or writing a letter of advice or something like that. And the inclination is going to be, especially if it's labelled as urgent, which I appreciate for some people, everything they get is labelled as urgent. And so as a result, none of it's really urgent. But the inclination is going to be to hit the books straight away, you know, open up the website, go to the library. I know people don't do that anymore, but we used to. So give us a break. It's one of those things, though, where if you do that, you run the risk of getting off the rails very quickly. So let's say you're writing an advice. The absolute first thing you need to do is to ensure that you actually understand what you're being asked to do. Do you have all the relevant facts at your disposal? Do you understand the question? Have you identified the areas of law that you're working in? Do you know who the client is? Do you have access to the file? Do you need to ask any more questions of your instructor before they go off to lunch? Whatever the case may be, the first thing you must do is understand with some detail and precision what you're being asked to do and what the questions you need to address actually are. Because once you've got that, then you can actually start refining the task as you're going to complete it. But if you just hit in, you know, you start reading paragraph one, you might start researching corporations, whereas in reality, you should be in powers of attorney legislation or something like that, because you've latched onto an issue that, as it turns out, isn't actually an issue. The usual reason that things like that have a tendency to go wrong is because someone makes an assumption rather than asking a question. And it may be that your instructor makes an assumption about your background, or it may be that you make an assumption about the instructions rather than going and asking. Please, for the love of everything, go and ask before you spend five hours doing the wrong thing. There is nothing as frustrating as sitting in your office waiting for someone to complete a task. I mean, hopefully you're doing something else. But if you need a task done, you've asked someone to do it for you or to help you with it, and they're over spending an inordinate amount of time doing the wrong thing because they didn't ask a question that would have taken 30 seconds. Please don't be that person. So understand the question with precision and detail. Understand the task and ask questions if you need to. One of the ways I often do this, as everyone who's worked with me will tell you, is if I have access to a whiteboard, there's a pretty good picture I'm going to, a pretty good chance I'm going to draw something on the whiteboard just to help me conceptualize what's going on, especially in a complex 
piece of advice where there might be a lot of moving pieces and there might be different avenues of law and there might be different relationships between parties and there might be different connective tissue in a legal sense that holds them together. A little mud map of what's going on with a few notes on it can help you stay on track without having to revisit your detailed instructions along the way. And taking five minutes or so to do that can really help clarify your knowledge of the question as well and bring up those questions I was talking about before that you might need to address, those clarifications that you might need to seek before you embark upon the task itself. Once you have done that, hopefully you've got a very clear idea of exactly what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. You need to know how long it's going to take you to do every step. Now, this is a little bit of a difficult situation because I appreciate you don't always know how long something will take, but the tasks that take the longest I have found are the tasks where the person does not give themselves a time limit to complete the task. I'm sure you've heard it before. A task will expand to the time that you have allotted to it. And this is 100% true. And if you don't allocate a time to it at all, you will have a tendency just to keep going and going and going and going. So I do suggest you allocate yourself a time. If you don't know how long the whole task will take, then give yourself a time during which you will accomplish a certain piece of the task. So while you may not know how long it's going to take to write the advice yet, you may know how long it's going to take you to conduct the necessary research. Give yourself a time limit on that and ensure that you're focused upon it during that until, of course, you get interrupted by someone, which is definitely going to happen. So now that you have done that and you have given yourself a time limit, it's time to embark upon the task. The question is, how do you go about not wasting time on things that don't matter? How can you quickly and confidently dispense with elements of the task that, as it turns out, are irrelevant or unnecessary in order to address the question? The first thing is this. Trust your gut to some extent. Now, I appreciate if you're a student or you're a law clerk or you're a new graduate, you might not put a lot of faith in your gut, but you might put some. If you are reading a case and it just doesn't seem like it's the right case and you can't figure out why you're reading it, probably and I'm not saying definitely, but probably a good call is to stop reading it and move on to the next one because you're quite likely wasting time. Now, of course, you can flag it to come back to if it gets referred to and you manage to figure out the relevance of it later. Flag it, save it, bookmark it, do something so that you can come back to it. But organize your work in a way that you can quickly dispense with that particular piece of research. Remember, by this stage, you understand the question and the issues and the task very well. So you should also be able to fairly quickly identify if you're off track. The second thing to do, of course, if you're finding yourself off track repeatedly, is to go back to your instructor and say, look, I've checked into those things you asked me to check into in order to start preparing this advice, and they just don't seem to be relevant. Can you work with me for five minutes or so just to ensure that I'm looking at the right thing? Now, I appreciate that some people don't have that kind of Uh, robust discussion ability inside their firm. Perhaps you work largely by yourself, or perhaps you simply don't have the kind of firm where people get to ask questions like that without getting frowned upon. But if you do, and I hope you do for your sake, take the opportunity to just spend a few minutes asking that question. Most firms say they've got an open door policy. If that policy is anything other than lip service, I encourage you to use it. Ask someone, even if you just ask someone next to you, You don't want to be asking people constantly because then you're just annoying. But if it would help you for them to give you a minute or two of their time, then I'd encourage you to try and take that up. But you need to be clear about what you want them to help you with for the same reason they need to be clear with the task in the first place. As you go ahead and you're executing, so this is the front loading part that we've spoken about. You have understood the task. You have perhaps drawn yourself a picture. You have then commenced the tasks as you see them. If it is a particularly complex series of tasks that you need to do, so it's not just research section 440 capital D of the Corporations Act and tell me what it says, please. But if you are in fact saying, 
please examine the relationship between 16 entities and determine for me whether entity 2 has any sort of fiduciary duty to entity 13 via the trust relationship and the powers of attorney legislation or something like that, you might find it beneficial to give yourself a mini to-do list, so a plan of action as to how you're going to work through the problem. And this will keep you on track so that you know what you're doing next. You don't have to keep going, oh, now where was I up to? What am I doing? What's going on? You know precisely what you're doing next as you complete each thing along the way. Taking five or 10 minutes to do a mini to-do list or a flowchart or whatever makes you happy so that you know what you need to do next will very much help you not flounder, especially when you get interrupted and you forget what you were going to do next in the first place. So I would encourage you to do that as well on more complex tasks. All of these suggestions are really dependent upon the task, of course. You're not going to draw a flowchart if there's a single entity with a single legal question with a single section of a single act and all you've been asked to do is print out the commentary. That's a waste of time. So <laughs> it's it's horses for courses. It really is. But when you're executing a task, the main thing is to not lose time as you're executing the task. And this is what I find people have a tendency to do, which is they leak time in the process of executing. So I'm not talking about wasting time. I don't think while you're in the office, you're going to jump on Facebook for a few minutes, but you leech time as you move from task to task because you haven't properly planned precisely what it is you're going to do. And I'll give you an example from my own work. As I develop a course, I spend a huge amount of time preparing what the course is going to look like, getting the table of contents, if you will, right. And then I can essentially record the entirety of the course in one go because I know exactly what I want to say. I know exactly what topics I'm going to touch on, what order they're going to be in, and the arc of the course is already determined. Now, sometimes I stuff things up and I might need to do them once or twice or whatever, but by and large, I can execute the whole thing very swiftly because I have prepared and I know how to move from piece to piece to piece to piece to piece without leeching that time as I try and figure out where I was up to and what I was going to do next and how it's going to look and have I done this section and what's going on. It's the planning process that allows me to execute quickly. It's not during the execution that I'm necessarily changing things. Now, this is not to create a rod for your own back. The fact that you have planned well doesn't mean that everything always goes according to plan. It just means that you have a guideline. If you, as you have planned, have made certain assumptions that turn out to be wrong, then you might need to pivot or you might need to spend a few minutes rejigging the plan and changing things up. But at the end of the day, that planning process will still help keep you on track because you will be able to identify what needs to be done next without having to spend another five or 10 minutes figuring that out. Do it at the start when you're in planning and then don't let that get in the way of your execution of the task at hand. So that's all I wanted to deal with today. There are, of course, a million, million different ways you can increase your speed of execution of a task. But for today's purposes, I just wanted to highlight that there is a certain amount of power in getting the planning stage right, and that will allow you to execute very quickly the actual given task once you know precisely what you want to do, in what order, and how long each part is going to take. As always... I appreciate you listening, I appreciate you being here, and I appreciate the reviews that you're going to leave at tipsaloys.com slash iTunes, and I will see you next time.